Hello and welcome to this weekend's edition of Mox News. I'm Olivia Brown. And I'm Tia Roach. The chalking controversy has resulted in a change of leadership for UTC student government. SGA President-elect Philip Stubblefield announced Monday that he is stepping down. He said he was attacked and mischaracterized and that he feels as if he can best serve students as a student advocate. Last week, SGA freshman Senator Haley Puckett chalked a Trump 2016 at Heritage Plaza with a wall. That ignited controversy with some calling the chalking racist. Puckett is part of the coalition that also elected Stubblefield. Despite calls for her to step down, Puckett has not resigned. A runoff between second and third place finishers in the presidential race will determine who will replace Stubblefield. The runoff election will take place April 18th and 19th. Students sent a campus-wide email through Org Sync calling for resignation of Stubblefield as well as Vice President-elect. That email linked to a recall petition which currently has over 700 signatures. As a result, access to Org Sync has been changed. The Office of Dean of Students said this email was allowed to be sent through a misconfiguration of privileges in Org Sync and was not approved for distribution by the university. This weakness in our system has been resolved. The recent events led to a campus-wide discussion called Honest Conversations, Free Speech and Competing Ideas. Our cameras were not allowed in the room during the dialogue, but students leaving the event had enough to say about diversity and the Haley Puckett incident. Of uh, the response, I do feel some people in there definitely were just talking to pet the minority on the back. Not that it offends me, because it's what was expected. I try to be prepared for what I'm walking into. But some people in there did say that they want to want to have open arms to the minority for different things going on campus, for the inclusion, for it to be diverse. And I'm definitely with it. I, I want to be a huge part of that. So Thank you. for those that, that showed me their welcome, I mean, it, I'm ready whenever they are. I really needed to get an understanding uh, from both sides. That's what I've been trying to get for the longest. So uh, that's, that's pretty much what about me. I'm trying to get an understanding of the other side because uh, I, of course, me being a part of the minority side, I got their point of view like from the jump. So it was just really important for me to get get to understand the other side of it pretty much. Why, why are we not partnering with y'all? We only have the opportunity to partner with the minority. So it's like my event is only targeted towards me when in actuality I would love for the majority to come because I hate small crowds anyway. But that's definitely the next step we could take. Just if you the, if you the head of campus, you the biggest organization, do something with the smaller one. Then it'll be together. The event covered freedom of speech, inclusion on campus, and the way the media presented our campus. Students openly voiced their opinions and their frustrations with the campus. Though our campus seems divided, some hope for a solution. A car fire forced the evacuation of a UTC dorm. Brittany Fiddler tells us what happened. 600 students had to evacuate their apartments last night, and here's the reason why. A car parked in the Stoffel garage exploded into flames. My roommate's friend actually saw the car like burst into flame, so she t was texting her and was like, this is not a drill, you know. You can see the charred wreckage was towed away and the heat of the fire scorched the wall of the garage. Residents were forced to stay outside until 2.30 a.m. I got about three hours of sleep. <laughs> I thought about emailing Dr. Andrews and saying, I can't come to class, but <laughs> I didn't. I suck it out. It has yet to be determined the cause of the fire. University officials stated that the car explosion damaged sprinklers and a nearby car. Fortunately, there were no reported injuries. That was Brittany Fiddler reporting. Mox News will let you know if the cause for the explosion is determined. A UTC student drunkenly took a more scenic route through campus last week, and all of it was caught on tape. Our Harrison White shows us what happened and gets campus reaction. An intoxicated UTC student took a more scenic route through campus last week. The incident was captured via Snapchat and showed scenes of 20-year-old Dylan Buck walking around downtown and eventually getting into his car and driving away. Buck was booked and charged with driving under the influence, striking fixtures on the highway, possession of a controlled substance, and more. Robert Ratchford said Buck was cooperative with police and caused minimal property damage. He also had this to say. 
we're not talking about just property damage. We're talking about the safety and the lives of others that you're taking in your own hands when you drink and you get behind the wheel of a car. It's a whole lot safer to plan ahead than it is to um, have to relive something tragic that happened to you or to someone that you caused it to happen to. Before his joyride through campus, a security guard stopped Buck, who appeared to be holding a beer. With many factors at play, students shared their opinions. It was pretty crazy, pretty hectic. You know, he uh, just kind of drove through the city pretty, pretty hammered. When he went to the uh, the memorial auditorium of that, you know, security guard would have, you know, taken his beer, you know, alerted the authorities for public intoxication. I mean, they could have stopped it. They could have called the police earlier. You know, there's a thing called being an active bystander, and those people easily could have, you know, intervened and said something or helped him or, you know, of course, I mean, he chose to do what he did, but the fact that they just stood there and Snapchat at the whole thing, that's people's first reaction. Like, you know, let me take my phone out and, you know, film this, record this, instead of actually helping someone. And it's really sad. It's really sad. Mox News followed up with Jefferson's restaurant, where the student was seen in the video. The manager declined a television interview with us, but said they escorted Buck out of the restaurant and asked if he needed a ride home. He also said Jefferson's employees always check IDs regardless of how old they look. I'm Harrison White. Back to you. Buck was in court today for a charge in November. Mox News will let you know what happens. In international news, we continue to find out more about the Panama Papers. The International Consortium of Investigative Journalists published a massive leak of 11.5 million documents called the Panama Papers. They give detailed information about offshore companies. That includes the identities of shareholders and company directors. So far, the Prime Minister of Iceland stepped down because of mounting protests. The papers also implicate government leaders in four other countries. The North Carolina governor signed a controversial bill blocking cities and local governments from allowing transgender individuals to use public bathrooms of their choice. Earlier this year, North Carolina leaders expanded anti-discrimination laws for the LGBT community. That allowed transgender people to use the bathrooms of their gender identity. This newest legislation called the Bathroom Bill bans individuals from using public bathrooms that do not correspond to their biological sex on their birth certificate. Meanwhile, lawmakers in Kansas have introduced a controversial bill to the state and house that could give students $2,500 if they encounter a transgender person using the bathroom for their gender identity. The Student Physical Privacy Act would allow students to only use bathrooms, locker rooms, and shower rooms designated for the sex indicated on their birth certificates. UTC Women's Center brought attention to the problem of sexual assault. Here are the events they hosted to bring about better awareness. As you can see here, we have a teal cup display that has been put on by the UTC Women's Center to raise awareness about sexual assault. There's a lot of teal cups here, and each cup represents a student, an individual, that will or has already been sexually assaulted in their college career. There's 1,409 cups here to represent each student. The goal of UTC SAAM is to raise awareness about sexual violence and ways to prevent it. UTC Women's Center and No More partnered together for this week's events. Staff representative with No More, Brooke Satterfield, says that year-round, the No More campaign encourages students to be educated on policies of sexual misconduct and also resources for help if needed. So we're, um, we're right now just kind of supporting the Women's Center um, for this week and all the events that they're doing uh, will be there. But we are definitely a year-round thing. Um, like I said, just really trying to push the, um, the policies and definitions of, you know, what is consent? Are you in a healthy relationship? Is your relationship unhealthy? Um, have you been in a situation like this? We want to push that year round. And Included in the week of events was the red flag campaign. So this is the red flag display and it's a part of Sexual Assault Awareness Month's week of events. For this event, we're encouraging students to write down red flags to look out for in unhealthy relationships. They're encouraging them to post it on social media and then finally forming a ribbon to represent Sexual Assault Awareness Month. And we really want to show students that we stand in solidarity with them and encourage them that UTC supports them. The week ended with an interview stimulation to educate students on what to do when reporting a sexual assault and also sexual misconduct policies. For more information, you can visit the UTC Women's Center on the second floor of the UC or visit utc.edu forward slash women's center. Students got to try their luck at the annual casino night. This event ended the Campus Activity Board week. 
It gave students the opportunity to play casino games, win prizes, and enjoy free food provided by CAB. Students gambled with fake money that could be exchanged for tickets. Students who attended casino night said that they enjoyed the event and can't wait to see what CAB has planned for next year. Before we leave, we want to say congratulations to a Mox News member. Our Kiana Crutcher did great in the Omega Psi Phi Scholarship Pageant. Kiana was first runner-up out of eight contestants. We would also like to congratulate our very own Mitchell George, Justin Lee, and Harrison White for winning first place at the Tennessee Associated Press Awards. They won for Best Specialized Reporting, Best Videography, and Best News Story. Way to go. That does it for this edition of Mox News. Thank you for joining us. Check out our videos uploaded throughout the week to YouTube, and don't forget to subscribe. We air on the UTC TV Housing Channel 2.1, so stay tuned in and have a great weekend from all of us here at Mox News.